All right, we're going to review. Uh -huh. Aha. So we'll go back to the slide and then um, going to kick things off for the 2024 Illinois Annual Member Meeting uh, with Cynthia Hoyle. Hi, everybody. Um, we are delighted to have you here. I am the president of Ride Illinois, and I'm uh, from Urbana, Illinois, but I'm currently in uh, California, so I'm coming to you virtually from uh, the West. And uh, we appreciate your being here, your interest in our organization. We have a lot of fun things to share. Uh, so next slide. We particularly want to thank our corporate members. Uh, we deeply appreciate their support. And there's a list of our corporate members here. I will not read through them, but uh, we would encourage you for those that have the opportunity to offer any uh, products or services to you for you to thank them for their support for our organization. Next slide. And to thank you for attending the membership meeting and to say uh, welcome. There are a lot of really great things going on. Riot Illinois is doing some marvelous work and uh, we're hoping to share some of that with you today. And the board met earlier this afternoon. We took 30 minute break and took care of a lot of business. And uh, the picture that you're seeing here is from the recent National Bike Summit. And these are our members meeting with members of Congress and advocating uh, for uh, better, safer streets and bike riding. So up next, we have uh, the agenda so you can see uh, what we're going to do. So I have now officially welcomed everyone. And then we're going to introduce the board and staff. We're going to hear updates from two committees. And we're going to hear about the strategic plan and where we are with that. Then we're going to have our annual election, and then we have a Q&A Q &A and some member engagement and a raffle. No annual membership meeting would be complete without our raffle. And then we will close and deliver a call to action. So off we go. Next slide. And I will hand it off to Dave. All right. Uh, thank you, Cynthia. My name is Dave Simmons, Executive Director of Ride Illinois. Um, I wanted to just take a moment to recognize the current board. Um, you all as members will be uh, involved in a, a change in the board a little bit later on. Um, this is a very talented group of individuals. Um, they've pledged their time. They've pledged their talent to the organization as well. Um, and our directors all serve on at least one committee uh, and are, are committed to our, our mission, which is to make Illinois better through biking. <clears throat> Worth noting that the Ride Illinois board is a, a governing board and a working board. So the folks on our board do roll up their sleeves and, and help us uh, achieve our goals, uh, assist our staff. Um, so it's, it's very much appreciated. Uh, Cynthia, George, uh, Jim, and Linda have served as officers for the, the past year. They're on the upper left of the, the two rows of photos here. Um, their true belief in Ride Illinois and our mission and the service the organization provides to the people of Illinois is commendable. Um, and this, this is my little internal play uh, or, or internal pun. Uh, they've received plenty of emails and text messages from me over the last year, yet they have not complained, so I appreciate that. Uh, the others who serve on, on the board, uh, they have the titles of directors. Uh, some serve as chairs of committees. Uh, they too are engaged, active board members, uh, and as a small, for a small organization like Ride Illinois, that's really important. Not only does the board establish and monitor the overall strategy of the organization, but our, our board members are our most fervent, dedicated volunteers. So uh, please take a moment. You can do it quietly. You can do it visually. Uh, I want to just show a little bit of appreciation uh, of the Ride Illinois board. Uh, there's also fancy reactions in, in Zoom that you may have used. Feel free to use those reactions, but want to take a moment and just thank these 15 individuals for their service to the organization. Mm -hmm. Round of applause or how? Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, members in attendance, that would be you who are here live today, will be voting on a slate of candidates to fill four vacancies on the board uh, later in this meeting. 
uh, our staff. So this is uh, the Riot Illinois staff. Um, we, we typically refer to ourselves as small but mighty. Gina, Kenny, and I are the full-time employees. We manage our, our advocacy and awareness efforts, um, the communication, the membership program, the event planning, social media, et cetera. Um, and if you as a member have ever sent an email to the, what we call our info email address, info at riotillinois.org, uh, if you've commented on social media, if you've called our, it's a Google voice line, uh, it's, it's either Gina or myself who you'll be communicating with. So uh, we appreciate those that have been reached out one way or the other. Ed Barsabi and Greg Murphy, they plan our largest annual fundraiser, the Grand Illinois Bike Tour. Um, that is our, well, our largest fundraiser, and that revenue is used to fund our ongoing efforts. And so uh, some of folks on the call today have participated in Give It, as we affectionately call it, or maybe joining us this June. And so we appreciate you, uh, your support as an attendee. And then Jessica Nooney focuses on our uh, education programs, such as our Bike Safety Quiz Mini Grant and the Ride Illinois Safely program. Um, she fields calls, she sets up quizzes, she processes claims. Um, and yeah, she does quite a bit there. And she's been with, with us for about three years, and I have never met her in person. It's all always been virtual. So all right. we need to make that happen. Um, Let's move on to some of the updates from a, a couple Ride Illinois committees that we, we feel would be of interest to you. And they're actually the two newest committees that the um, the board formed last year. Uh, I think it was at the July meeting. Brendan Kevinites is the chair of the advocacy committee. Um, he's going to share a brief update about that committee's recent work. So, Brendan, if I could turn things over to you for that update. Brandon, are you here? Uh, I don't see Brandon. So fortunately I have, <laughs> so he may be trying to get in somehow. Um, so I just wanted to share what, what Brandon was gonna share. And these are his words, I will say that. He shared this update, uh, but legislative priorities that Ride Illinois has been focused on. Um, Bills focus on the uh, reducing speed limits in urban districts. Um, that, that's one of the bill, House Bill 3530, that's currently being discussed in Springfield. Um, there's been a bill focused on developing an e-bike rebate uh, that, that was introduced. Um, that gets uh, kind of a mixture of, of support, um, but we're hoping that at some point, Illinois residents will be able to tap into a rebate program in order to get uh, an e-bike. Part of that co conversation and communication is with People for Bikes, and they've been super helpful trying to kind of decipher what other states and municipalities have done. Um, so they've been a, a nice ally. Um, and then the third uh, update that we want to share legislatively, some may be familiar with either Bob versus Wayne or Alave versus the city of Chicago. These are cases that have upheld uh, the distinction of bicyclists as being permitted road users, but not intended. Uh, and that's uh, Illinois is unique in that regard. So we're meeting with League of American Bicyclist Policy staff next week uh, to discuss a strategy for uh, hopefully being able to overturn that at some point. Um, there is a bill tracker on our website. Gene, I don't know if you can maybe can you pull up a link and throw that in the chat? Where we track state and federal bills, um, those that are relevant to our work. Um, it's, it's a newer feature and, and I know staff really appreciates being able to go to one place and, and kind of see what uh, the status of bills and I encourage you all to, to take a look at that as well. Uh, the next update we wanna share, uh, the, the map in the center of this slide here, those are all fatalities. Uh, fatal bicycle crashes in the state of Illinois. Um, 177, if we include the, the gentleman who was killed the other day. Uh, it is definitely something that impacts folks literally from Zion to Cairo. Um, so we as an organization decided to shine a light on the fact that this is not an urban or a rural or a suburban issue. Um, and so our, our response to fatal crashes is something that was enacted earlier this year, 
Um, we have a map, the map on the website. We have a, a, a means of sharing news of fatalities on social media. And we have a couple volunteers who are helping to do some research on past fatalities to see what we can learn uh, from those incidents, those, those tragedies. Um, that the map and then more information about that program is on um, the advocacy tab of our website. And the last update from the advocacy committee is our regional action teams. So the photo on the very right, we refer to the folks as part of those teams as RATS, um, having a little bit of fun with the acronym. Uh, but we have had over 70 folks from around the state have signed up. Um, they attend uh, a virtual check-in meeting every two months where we talk about updates from Riot Illinois, but also offer the opportunity for them to tell us what's going on in their communities. It's important that information flows both ways. Uh, one of the goals that, that we've established with the RAT program is to empower individuals, to give them tools that they can use in conversation in their local communities uh, to help improve safety and infrastructure for bicyclists. Uh, there is a, a, a link to, um, maybe it's another one you could share, Gina, sorry to put that on you, but uh, on our advocacy page, there is a, a link, thank you, to the regional action teams. Um, at this point, I'll take a moment to just say, if you have questions or comments, you can put them in the chat, and we do have time uh, towards the end to, to share, uh, hopefully answer your questions, or, or we'll follow up with you later on. Um, so that is our update from the Advocacy Committee. Um, I will find Brendan and maybe he can add anything else that he might want to share. Uh, the Education Committee, that's the second of the two new committees. Um, it formed, yes, yeah, so last August, and the committee members began meeting soon afterwards. This has been a very active committee. Um, I think it's also the largest committee. And so the members are focused on uh, improving and expanding Ride Illinois' education programs and resources. So as with uh, the Advocacy Committee, I want to share three quick updates with you. Um, the photo on the left is from a, uh, a, a class in Medina, Illinois, with some, you know, some young folks uh, and their parents as well. So that's the Ride Illinois Safely program. Uh, there is ongoing development of that program with input from the committee members. Um, in just the two years since we've, uh, I guess, accepted or solicited requests from organizations and communities that would like to offer bike education, uh, we've received 75 requests. And these have become from all around Illinois. Um, some of the courses are virtual. Some of the requests, I should say, are for virtual courses, and some are for in-person. Um, titles include Smart Cycling, Bike Safety Tips for Kids and, and the Bicycle Friendly Driver. So it's been, uh, we're, we're pleased with the reach so far. Um, and in the future, our plan is to bring on an organizational coach who can certify folks in Illinois who want to become a league cycling instructor. So that's gonna be a real benefit to the organization and help expand our reach um, educationally. And we're planning the first um, seminar or interested individuals in the in the city of normal this fall. So that's an exciting step. Uh, in the middle, the map there for the bike, bike safety quiz mini grants, that those are all the communities, or I should say all the schools uh, where that, that have tapped into our bike uh, safety quiz mini grant program. Uh, this year alone, the school year, it's 283 schools. So it, it definitely is a far reaching program. Um, last year, we far exceeded the funding that I that Ride Illinois receives from IDOT, and um, thank you to those who helped us fill that short shortfall with, uh, with your donations. Looks like we're at the same pace this year, uh, but not in the same situation where we need to reach out to our generous members. Uh, but we do anticipate about 65,000 students completing one of our quizzes this year, which would match what we had done last year. Um, I mentioned uh, the number of schools. So yeah, 280, 283 schools uh, have applied this year. Uh, and I, I think this is kind of a fun fact because we, we, we send checks to the schools after they complete, um, or their students complete the assignments and it, it ranges widely. So I grabbed two, um, two schools here. So 22 students at Altamont grade school 
Um, that was one of the smaller checks that were, were written all the way up to 703 driver's ed students at Oswego High School. So it truly does, um, has a wide range. Uh, and then the last update for education to share is the photo on the right, the available resources that we have. Um, we continue to refine and add uh, and develop new resources. So, you know, whether it's you as an individual, your, your company, your club, a community organization, those resources are, um, you know, we send them to you free of charge. Uh, we have a, a, a request form on our website that uh, you can request any materials from us. The funding to develop, to print, to distribute all these resources come from the Share the Road license plate grants. So if you happen to have a Share the Road license plate uh, on your vehicle, thank you. Um, it's, it's a great source of funding and it is um, money that has to be used for education. And if you don't have the plate, that's another great reason for, uh, for getting the plate, uh, either 20 or $22 comes to Ride Illinois that we can use to enhance our education programs. Um, I mentioned the material request form. Um, it's been very busy, as you can imagine, this time of year. We tend to get anywhere between 80 and 100 requests each year to send materials. Um, and I'll point out uh, the, the yellow stickers and buttons that are in there are promoting our new I Can Bike There campaign. Uh, it's a partnership with, with Working Bikes and the Points app. Um, those stickers and buttons go over quite well. People like the empowering uh, statement that, that they include. And then most recently, we created uh, what we're calling Bike Safety Quiz for Public Events. So it's a one or two page downloadable PDF that can be easily printed and then brought to community events, public events, um, schools, the like. So I want to thank, uh, take a moment just to thank the Education Committee members, Trevor, George, Elizabeth, Charlie, Larry, uh, and David, and of course, Jessica for coordinating all of our educational outreach work. Uh, I'm going to turn things over to George Farrow, who is Vice President of our board, to share a reminder of our mission and vision and provide an update on progress uh, made in line with our strategic plan. So George, turn thank things you. over to you. In the next slide. We're going to make Illinois better through biking. That's our overall mission. And I need to see the bit behind that. I can be sure I'm on task. Yes, you do. All right. Hang on just a second. I just need to hide this. Oh, here. Okay. Very good. Thank you. We, our mission is to make Illinois better through biking. And that's what we're doing. And we have a strategic plan. And our strategic plan. Our, our our vision is that we're going to, and you can read that. I'm not going to read it. <laughs> read it. I, I have 53 years of teaching. I don't use slideshows the way you're supposed to. I just let the slide be there, and I'll That's let fine. you read it, and I'll tell you what's what's in the background. Our strategic plan. We did develop a strategic strategic plan. It is not like strategic plans of other organizations. It is actually functioning. We are doing things to meet the plan. Some organizations have a plan. It sits on a shelf and collects dust. Ours doesn't. Uh, we have some strategies and goals. Our first uh, goal was to greatly reduce and ultimately eliminate bicycle fatalities in Illinois. And we developed some strategies, some strategies to accomplish this goal. Yeah, excuse me. I've been sitting here all day. I'm getting tired now. Uh, or, and and so the, we're, we have some strategies that we're doing. You know, for example, uh, we want to influence and prioritize IDOT policy and state legislation and federal legislation. Well, we made a big uh, goal. We we addressed that goal. And one of the points on our strategies was to form the advocacy committee. We formed the advocacy committee, and it is a very active committee. Our, another strategy was to uh, uh, do a focus on awareness, outreach, and engagement. In other words, we want to make safety our number one message. Well, part of that is through our RAT program. Our RAT network is growing, it's meeting, it's doing what it's supposed to do. That was one of the strategies. Another strategy was to educate the public. Well, guess what? We have an education committee now, and that education committee has been formed. It is really functioning. We're working on getting more trained LCIs in the state of Illinois by having our own organizational coach. And we're going to be report, re, recruiting 
and training and supporting LCIs on their on their teaching throughout the state. And then we are still working on identifying some staffing needs. I'm only going to talk about that one thing. As far as three updates, we are working with uh, ISBE to develop a safe bike and walking curriculum for K-12 schools. There was a state law passed several years ago <clears throat> that required K-8 schools to uh, have uh, teach bike safety and walking safety as a part of their curriculum. Problem is the state board passed, the legislature passed the law, the state board got it, but the schools didn't know what to do with this. So now we're developing a curriculum and we're hoping that working with the state board will have that curriculum up to the schools and kids will know more about safe biking. Uh, as a personal note, I have a school that has invited me to come in and teach 20 minute mini lessons for the next month. Mm. Uh, they have 17 classrooms. I'm teaching 17 mini lessons. Mini lessons. So that's going to be fun. Uh, we've discussed our legislative priorities. That's part of the strategic plan. And uh, we are inviting you all to come to the 2025 Illinois Bike Walk Summit, which will be in April of 2025. It'll be here in Springfield. Don't quite have the date exactly set because you're still working with the hotel to get an open weekend. So we're we're going to have that set up. We'll get that information out to you as soon as we get things rolling. Uh, and with that, I think... Uh, That's your last, maybe your last slide here. My last slide. Okay, the plan, like I mentioned earlier, it is a living document. It will be revised over time. As we, as we uh, accomplish our strategic goals, our mini goals, and get them accomplished, we'll add to it. There are opportunities for our membership involvement. One thing we did that has really helped us advance that, that plan is adding general members to our committees. In the past, the committees were only members of the board of directors. We now have some committees that have numerous members as part of that committee. Anyone wants to become a member of any of our standing committees, and you can see those on our website, the standing committees, please contact Dave and ask about that committee, and he, he will get it to you. The, you don't become a member of the committee automatically. The board has to approve you as a member of the committee, but we're, we're seeking members. We need you. We need it for education. We need it for advocacy. We need committee members for the fundraising committee. We need uh, members for our, uh, um, what's, what's your committee? It's, it's the 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 nominating and the governance committee needs yeah. members. That's the smallest committee, but it has a big, important part of the, of the uh, uh, goals for our, our plan. We have to have the right people on the board. And all of this is available on our website. Repeat myself again. So I think I have all my uh, mm -hmm. slides done. Yeah. And I did it without a lot of notes because that's the way I do I But I teach. All the slide is is my keywords. There you go. And then I expand it from what was in my brain. It isn't all there now. <laughs> and if any of the topics that have been discussed so far are, are of interest to you, uh, again, the info at rideillinois.org is a great way to reach both me and Jenna. And, sorry, I saw Jenna from the office on the next screen. Gina. So it is a way to. I've been to putting links in the chat. I may have missed one or two, but I've been trying to keep them. All right. Um, You're doing a great job, Gina. Yeah, so Dick, going to turn things over to Dick Westfall, who is the chair of our governance and nominating committee. Um, I will say this, that slide was a request of of Cynthia, and I found some fun gifts that uh, just kind of embody the appreciation that, that we have for um, uh, some outgoing board members. So I'll stop that now, unless you want one more look at Jason Momoa making hand <laughs> All right, Dick. Okay, I'd like to recognize our our board members who are stepping down this year. Uh, Katie, Trevor, uh, Deborah, and Rip. Um, we do have turnover in the board, and um, we're sorry to see these folks go, but we appreciate the contributions they have made to Ride Illinois. Um, these are serious people, and and we we will miss them. Sorry, and I think I closed out of 
Chrome there. So give me just a second. This is where the, the, the Mac users gets confused. <laughs> I thought I was just trying to get back to, so Dick can see the slide. Um, so give me just a moment, apologies for that. There you go. Yeah, we're, there we go. All right. Always use rare, right? You can continue waxing okay. on poetic about the, the board members who are leaving if you'd like. Um, board members serve three-year terms. Sometimes we have people who are, uh, leave the state and have to step down. Sometimes it's uh, other other personal um, reasons. So this year we had four vacancies on the board, which is higher than usual. Uh, we conducted, first of all, we had a call for uh, applications. We reviewed all the folks who applied. We uh, interviewed everybody. And uh, I want to say that everybody who applied demonstrated a passion for cycling and a willingness to work, which, which are key to being on this board. Uh, and we uh, have recommended a slate of candidates, as you can see there on the screen. Uh, these are folks who can, can add to the skills and experience of our board. Uh, we're happy to see, see people who bring something new to the board and kind of uh, increase our pool of expertise. Uh, Linda Brown is from Olney. Uh, she's currently a, a probation officer at uh, the uh, Second Judicial Circuit Court Services. And she's served on boards uh, at the state and local level. And she's uh, very interested in expanding tr bike trails in Illinois. Uh, Casey Crowley is um, our second candidate, she lives in uh, Lake Barrington. She's an urban mobility planner. And for us old guys, that's that's a new title for me, <laughs> urban mobility. Uh, we have a consulting firm and uh, she's worked on a variety of projects and uh, she brings some technical expertise that we need. Uh, James Hudson is from Lake in the Hills. He's um, Currently, an executive director at Winnebago County uh, CS CASA. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And he's got a lot of board experience uh, and he has a lot of fundraising experience, which uh, lit our eyes up. And finally, Stephen Simp Simpson Black is who resides in Springfield. Uh, he's worked uh, or served on uh, commissions and citizens group in uh, planning and zoning and transportation. He's a small business owner and he's uh, he's dedicated to low carbon business practices. Um, this is a good group and I would uh, urge you to um, vote to add them to the board. Uh, and we will do this through an anonymous Zoom poll where you just is yes or no? Yes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start. First of all, thank you, Dick, for sharing the credentials of the four candidates or four nominees that the board has uh, put forth. I'm going to launch a, a Zoom poll, and it is uh, yeah either a simple yes or no. So it should pop up momentarily. We're going to keep an eye on um, activity within the poll, and then we will close the poll once uh, votes cease being cast. So I just launched the poll. I guess we'll know if folks are able to see it. If you're able uh, to you can see it. You can see it. All right. So just ask all the members who are on the call today um, if you could vote yes or no if you approve the slate of candidates to join the Ride Illinois Board of Directors. Give everyone a moment here. Working okay. Are folks able to see the poll? Let's see. J. 
Gina, are you able to see it? Uh, I was able to see it, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's a visible, Dave. Yeah, it doesn't vote. Say, say it again there, Rip. Yeah, the poll is um, available. Okay. If folks can click yes or no on that. I'm not seeing any results here on our end, but I think um, I I just did yes and submit. Okay. So okay, well then we'll just give it a second. Maybe um, yeah. typically we would see results here. But mm -hmm. sorry, I could have voted, but I xed out of it. That's right. And that would have we'll added one to it. We'll see. Yeah. We'll, 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 yes. we'll, well, I thought then he would know. Let's see what happens with that. Right? Check our chat here. Polls available. And you voted. Thank you, John. Thank you, Anne. All right. So then it's something. Computer glitch. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll give it just another 30 seconds and then we'll end, end the poll here. This is where the Jeopardy theme song comes into play, I think, right? All right, we'll go five, four, three, two, one. Huh. Well, yeah, well, so I don't know what it's showing. Is it showing zero? What are you saying? Oh, uh, 100%. It's not showing oh. me how many minutes. All right. Well, and I did for not. some reason, we're not seeing that here. So thank you, Gina, for <laughs> confirming. And thank you for those um, who voted. Dick, if you would. We'll do a wrap up here. Well, thanks for voting. Thanks for uh, going through this procedure. Uh, we've added four new board members, Linda, Casey, James, and Stephen. Um, we're lucky that they dedicated their interest and time to this organization. And we're looking forward to working with them, bringing them up to speed, getting them on some committees and getting some work out of them. Um, <laughs> Please welcome and congratulate our four new board uh, directors via chat or by using one of the reactions available on Zoom. So okay. thanks. Thanks for voting and thanks for uh, the new board members taking this big step. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dick. Um, and then you've got one, we got one more task. Yes. Now that we have a, a new reconstituted board, so to speak. Uh, one of the last orders of business we have to do for uh, our organization is to select the officers for this coming year, 2024 to 2025. These individuals were nominated by the board in the quarterly meeting uh, before this annual meeting. And the nominees are the president, Jim Norris, vice president, George Farrell, Treasurer James Hudson and Secretary Linda Warner. As a matter of board men, board business, I'll entertain a motion from the board to approve the officers for the 2024-2025 term. Who wants to make a motion? I'll make that motion. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Uh, congratulations to Jim, George, James, and Linda for being approved as officers to the board. And we thank you for your service to Right Illinois, our members, and the people of Illinois. Uh, this concludes the business portion of the annual member meeting. And I'm going to turn it back to Dave. All right, and I had one typo in our, our script here, and we had a Jim and a James, and he did not recognize Stephen. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is, that's right. Oh, this is the officers. officers. My yeah. yeah, there's the Jim all right. and James. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all we're, right. We're missing Paul and Ringo. All right, it's true. <laughs> all right, so before we shift um, to some Q&A and then uh, wrap up with a raffle, I, this was um, – a word cloud, if you're familiar. So when you registered for this session, uh, you were asked to, in three words or less, which most of you <laughs> abided by, to describe what a bicycle means to you. Admittedly, I had to do a little bit of editorializing um, to kind of pull some of the responses together. Um, but th this word cloud shows what your responses 
uh, what, what they were. And if I can get back to this without canceling us out of the Zoom, that would be awesome. Um, but, you know, what, what stands out here obviously is going to be the freedom and transportation and, and both health and healthy, um, which I felt was worth keeping separate and, and fun as well. But there's some really interesting responses in here. So thank you all for um, for including your response. Uh, community, right? Uh, when you're out on a bike, you're out amongst uh, your neighbors and you're out in the community. Uh, connections, whether it be connections with, to, um, to a network, bicycle network, um, or connections with individuals. Uh, mindfulness, uh, as someone who in, enjoys biking for the emotional and, and, and mental uh, health benefits. I thought that was interesting as well. Uh, nature and ecological, those are other good examples. Uh, if there's anything that you wanted to add, other words that come to mind, feel free to, to put those in the chat. But uh, this this word cloud kind of embodies what uh, it, what bicycles mean to us and the potential that bicycles have for our society and our communities. And so thank you to everyone who, who chimed in and, and helped to create this fun little word cloud. All right, we have some time um, for questions. And so I will, I will revisit or visit the chat here, or you can also unmute yourself uh, to ask a question. Uh, if, we, if we do run out of time or if we don't um, just offer a suitable response to, to questions, we will follow up um, via email. And you can also email either the info at rideillinois.org or dave at rideillinois.org um, if you have questions that come up uh, after this meeting. So I'm going to visit the chat here and see if there are any questions. Thank you for all who commented on the fact that you were voting. Um, let's see, just kind of scrolling through. Thanks to the board members. Lots of thank yous. Clapping. Thank you, Gina, for putting in um, those links. Uh, John, I had a question. What do the colors uh, of the dots on the map represent. I'll go back to that slide. Those re um, right now, John, uh, those are different years, the, the fatalities and, and the year in which they occurred. Um, we're using a Google My Map to, uh, to track all those fatalities. So there's a limit to how many layers we could put in there, but we felt it was interesting to distinguish between the years and also then by having them on different layers, when one visits the map, they could toggle layers on and off to uh, kind of isolate or, or focus. You need to go back one more, Dave. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's what the colors currently mean. Uh, this map will continue to maintain, and I imagine it will evolve over time as well. Um, but each point on the map has additional information. If you wanted to click on a point, you could see, you learn about, um, date and time and other details that are captured in crash reports, essentially. So hopefully, John, that answers your question. Um, okay, congratulations. All right, so Wes uh, made a request for bicycles may use full lane signs while the city is refurbishing the street I live on in Belleville. Originally built in the use. In the uh, mid 1800s, parking on both sides of the street. Uh, in addition, you let your alderman um, committee understand uh, on the roads. The committee understand streets too narrow for bike lanes. Uh, provided um, with the DOT and paragraph, and the bikes um, bikes may use full lane signs. Um, sorry, I'm just having trouble scrolling here. I think it looks like. So you appreciate the efforts on this account and hope the streets and roads department can make use of the signs. That, that is part of the trick is while those signs are available, um, it, they need to go through a series of approvals and then of course installation as well. So Wes, thank you for doing that. I know <clears throat> there are uh, several communities in the state that have been, um, they've really, I guess, embraced having, having these signs that were uh, they are now approved for use. So if you know of um, roads in your community that can use uh, a little more awareness to motorists, uh, this is one way of 
increasing um, visibility. If if the roadway is uh, state maintained, we can make a request to IDOT mm -hmm. for those sites, even if they are in the city. <clears throat> for example, on Lebanon, where I live, we have a highway that goes past the school, state highway, and IDOT put in uh, lighted speed signs that give the speed of the driver, so now the drivers know how fast they're going through the school district. So uh, it can happen if you if you we get the request to IDOT too. <clears throat> Very fair point. Yeah. All right. I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat. Does any anyone have questions they want to come off of mute and ask, or you can go ahead and enter them into the chat. Trying to get us back to where we were. Yes. Just lots of congratulations for the new board. That's fantastic. All right, well, I will um, move on next to our raffle. I have everyone's name in that only that's here. Okay. Unless somebody's like dropped off. So we ready for me to spin? Or yeah. just... Yes, so are we doing, where's my raffle prizes? We've got three raffle prizes. Um, and yeah, Linda okay, and let's Gino, do the rides. uh Ride Illinois um water bottle first. Bob Van Balsa. Yeah, who I just saw Bob, Bob last weekend. Bob Van still on. I think so. Okay, all right. And the second on? set is the uh, cards. Um, bicycling cards. I have it on my thing here. Oh, my, it's Mikey Swire. Mike Swire. Congratulations, Mikey. Yep. Gets the 10 pack of bike theme note cards and then the artisan roasted coffee from Maple Leaf and some a coffee mug. It's a Ride Illinois swag. Cheryl Petzl. Cheryl Petzl. Cheryl was one of the first people that signed on. So is really the winner. Thank you. Yeah, we'll we'll be in touch after the meeting and uh, follow up and make sure we've got your correct address, and then we'll ship those items out to you. Yeah. So if you ever need to do a raffle, check out Wheel of Names. Yeah. It's a fun it's a fun way to um, randomly choose some names. Um, and I'll point out here real quick the. Uh, the partnership with Maple Leaf Coffee Roasters, <clears throat> there is a Ride Illinois coffee. So if you're a coffee drinker, um, you can purchase coffee from them. And they give us $2 for each bag um, that's donated to Ride Illinois. I believe the last topic here is to turn things over to our new board president, Jim Norris. Uh, so Jim, take well, it away. Thank you all for coming. And I, I really enjoyed seeing that. that um, word what do you call it a word cloud the word cloud and the big one being freedom and tom flood who is popular on twitter and other sites says that bicycles provide the freedom that the auto ads promise and I, I think there's a lot of truth to that if you look on the left you see the bike talk and and strong towns and chuck marone from um, strong towns appeared on the bike talk podcast on I think in March 23rd, you can find the podcast on either one of those um, websites. But the, the title of the talk was Why We Need to Show Empathy Toward Drivers. And there was a whole lot of pushback on that. And what Chuck said was that basically the roads and the systems and the infrastructure that we have now aren't working for anybody. The car drivers are not happy. They aren't happy people. Driving is not a fun experience, just despite what the what the ads show. And so we often feel that we're in a in a war against the cars and, and against drivers. But I learned long ago that when you have a problem like that, it might be initially satisfying to blame those people who are offending you, like the drivers and the cars. But it usually isn't effective because the real problem is not those people, because they're all caught in the same system that we are. And the problem is structural. It's not one of, of personalities. 
when we have a war stance, it isolates us and it makes it harder to identify the allies that we have out there who are also affected by that bad structure. And we do have allies, including with drivers. You know, we have kids who have lost autonomy um, and they're spending huge chunks of their childhood in the back seat of an SUV looking at a screen. And in, in an article in the Journal of Pediatrics that came out back in September was called The Decline in Independent Activity as a Cause of Decline in Children's Mental Health and Well-Being. And we've all seen all the, the news items about, you know, about the anxiety and the mental health issues that kids are dealing with. And it's not just because of what was happening with COVID. A lot of these trends were starting well before COVID and have just been um, pushed forward and gotten worse. Parents spend more time than ever ferrying kids to, to different events and to schools. And they understand the risks that are involved in doing that. And so it, they're pushed into a, an ever increasing arms race of having a, a bigger vehicle which then poses a threat to, to us as cyclists and other pedestrians and others on the road. Working people spend a huge portion of their income on automobiles and the longer commutes and chauffeuring kids. And a report came out last week that said that the main driver of inflation um, is now owning and operating vehicles. And that's where the biggest cost. The average price of a new car is now just under $50,000. And a used car is getting close to $30,000. Insurance rates have increased 22% in the past year or so. And all these costs are hitting all of us. And the effects of it are hitting all of us. And we are losing freedom. People with disabilities lose um, independence because of the infrastructure that we've chosen. The average senior citizen outlives their ability to drive by seven to nine years but yet they still feel the need to drive and that puts themselves and, and everyone else at risk. Losing a driver's license is one of the number one reasons, there is a number one reason why people have to move out of their homes and into assisted living or into nursing homes, which is not something I've ha heard anybody speak about. It's something that they wanna have happen. Cities that wanna lower their speed limits to become more livable are prohibited by doing so, or prohibited in doing so by state and federal regulations. What we have isn't working for anyone and we can't fix it alone. And we need to ally ourselves with, with everyone else out there. We are not at war with cars and drivers. We're, we're working together to try and find a solution and find structural changes that will make all of our lives better. Um, we need to build connections with our neighbors. I invite you to invite your neighbors to go on a bike ride, ride your bike to the park or to the store, ride with your kids to school and check out the I Can Bike there because there's a lot of resources there. Cycling is cheap and it has the potential to transform our lives for the better. And we can make Illinois better through biking. And so I, I think we've all got a lot of work to do and I thank you all for having the commitment and the drive to show up here today for this meeting and to support our organization. And we'll be calling on you to become more involved um, as the years go by and the months go by so that we can make Illinois a better place to live for everyone. So thank you all very much. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Well said. <laughs> All right, well, so to kind of wrap up then, um, it's tough to segue from the inspiration that you offered, thank you. Um, our contact information, both email, phone, and website, and of course on, on social media as well. Uh, we do enjoy hearing from folks. Um, we appreciate when you share your ideas, um, your concerns, your, your questions. So please, if, if we don't know um, about something, we, we certainly can't attempt to address it. So we, we do want to hear from our members. And with that, uh, yeah, well, you can, why don't you do it? You do our, our wrap well, up here. Thank you all for coming. And, you know, please look for ways to get involved. Um, sign up. Let us know if you're willing or interested in serving on a committee. Um, having experience in one of those areas is a key. 
but um, a drive and a commitment to, to, to make our organization and our state better is really the only requirement that we have. So give us a call, give Dave a call, and let's do this. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any final comments? I'm just look in the chat here. Um, we appreciate the appreciation. Um, I think we'll let you get on with your Saturday evening. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, and yeah, we, we hope to he hear from you or see you soon. Thank you.